Hi, and welcome to Animal Zone. I'm Arthur von Wiesenberger, and this handsome fellow is Mikey, my adopted pit bull. Animal Zone is the A to Z on everything about adoptable pets. Whether you're looking for a bird, a cat, a dog, or even a tortoise, we've got experts who can share their knowledge and insights. So cuddle up with your favorite critter and join us as we explore the Animal Zone. Today on Animal Zone, Larissa Wall, the pet rescue expert on Hallmark Channel's Home and Family, invites us into her home to meet her four-footed family members. Then we meet an Irish dog trainer at Canine Solutions in San Inez. Laura Stinchfield, the pet psychic, talks with Sprite, a kitten I adopted from Kitten Rescue LA. And then we'll meet a three-legged dog that has a family that adopted him without any concern of his handicap. So let's go for a stroll into the Animal Zone. Bonjour Alex. Bonjour Renaud. Happiness? It's great food prepared the French way. Chocolate eclair. What makes you happy? A touch of Paris. Without the trip to France. Handcrafted daily in our bakeries especially for you. Indulge yourself. Bon appétit. Please visit Renaud's in Gelson, Santa Barbara, Long Beach, and La Cañada, Flint Ridge. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. The Santa Barbara Humane Society offers low-cost spay, neuter, and vaccinations to cats and dogs in our community. And Dr. Sisk is our veterinarian who performs those surgeries and helps with the vaccinations. Also, please have a relationship with your local veterinarian in case of an emergency. Visit sbhumanesociety.org and remember... At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Today on Animal Zone, we're in Los Angeles and we're going to visit with Larissa Wall, Hallmark Channel's home and family pet rescue expert. We're going to go to her own home and see what kind of pets she's rescued. So let's go to check it out. Gosh, Larissa, it's so great to be at your beautiful home Thank you. and with all these gorgeous little creatures. Now, tell me about the one with the goggles. <laughs> okay, those are doggles. Goggles. Goggles, okay, goggles for dogs. Yeah. No, this is Piggly, and, and it's cute and all, and it looks funny, but it really does serve a purpose. She's albino, which means she does not produce the, the gene to protect her from the sun, just like human albino right. um, exists, so do dogs. And so, as you can see, she's got her little pink nose, and she does doesn't have any coloring to her, including her eyes, so she's very sensitive to the sun. Oh. So the doggles are actually there for a real purpose to protect her eyes. Are there that many albino dogs that they make these goggles? You know, oh. yes. Um, well, and it's not only albino dogs that need them, but for for the most part, albino dogs definitely do. They also need sunscreen because their skin can get sunburned, just like humans. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I don't believe albinoism is a very natural trait for dogs but because of breeding there are too many of them uh -huh. out there so she came to me as an albino and we're just doing everything we can to protect her and keep her happy and healthy and her lifespan is just like every other dog there's nothing wrong with her in any way and, and where did you get her I got her from a wonderful rescue here in LA called Saving Canine Lives Plus and uh, I know the woman very well and she actually posted on Facebook a photo of Piggly and said can anyone foster please 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 this dog was left at the vet whoever owned her abandoned her and I thought oh just what I need another foster nope I'm not doing it I closed Facebook mm -mm. and then of course I said okay I opened it back up <laughs> and I said okay I can short-term foster if nobody steps up but I mean short-term two weeks that's it 
well, nobody stepped up. She came to me for two weeks, and I said, forget it. She's not leaving. <laughs> she fits in the pack, and she's just so darn cute and loving. Oh, she's great. Now, you have a, I mean, there's three more, three more pups here. Yes. So Muppet, who's hiding, this is little Muppet. She is my first foster failure at this house. I've had other foster failures, but this is my first baby. She came to me through a rescue called Hand in Paw here in LA, and she is older. She's about seven or so. She's a multi-poo. She just looks like a forever puppy. And then Maple is also from Hand in Paw Rescue, who's about four years old. She's a Shih Tzu mix as far as we know, and she was a rescue and was being fostered by a family and they were gonna keep her. And then last minute they decided not to, so I said, I'll try her out with Muppet. And the two worked and, and that's the end of that one. And then Lady just came to me about a week ago. Lady was actually being sold on Craigslist. Not as a puppy, not a, not a breeding operation per se, but whoever had her um, decided they could no longer keep her because they lived in an apartment and she was having a little separation anxiety when they would leave and the neighbors were complaining and the landlord said, you have 24 hours, you need to find somewhere for her to go. So they, they posted her that they were um, selling her and I contacted them and I said, look, I'm not gonna buy a dog. I don't do that, I do rescue work. However, I can find her a wonderful home if you wanna relinquish her and they said, okay. And so she's been with me a week and um, it's interesting because most of the dogs I've, I've brought into my house have come from shelters or rescues. And so their behaviors follow a very specific pattern. But Lady came from a, a house. And uh, for all intents and purposes, from what we know, a not so horrible house. And so she's taking a little bit longer to adjust. This is kind of a, a really weird, place for her you know she's still a little unsettled where the other ones kind of become really um, uh, clingy really fast she's a little bit more standoffish but she's warming up and getting there and and blossoming and she'll do just fine and we'll find her a forever home soon so Larissa with all these beautiful pups what is your limit well before lady I actually had two other ones that just went to their forever home last weekend so that was five in the house which by the way isn't legal so we'll, <laughs> you know I'll try not to do that again but um, that's my limit, absolutely. I was going a little crazy because, you know, they're on my mind 24-7 when I'm at work, when I'm at dinner. And so it's a lot of responsibility. And having five to think about all day, you know, are they okay? Are they in their pen? Did they get out? What's going on? Did they get into a bag of treats that they shouldn't? It's too much. And besides uh, the responsibilities of having four pups, it's also expensive. I sometimes wonder where my money goes, and then I look around and I went, ah, yup, vet bills, pee pee pads, food. I mean, of course, these girls like their good food, yeah. which is not cheap, and they go through it like that. Um, washing just the, the towels and the sheets and the everything, you know, it, it costs a lot of money. And so on a realistic level, and for anybody out there who's looking to adopt an animal, you know, be realistic about what you can do. It's not fair to bring more than one in if you can't take care of more than one properly. You know, you really do need to weigh that out. And until the time is right, maybe don't bring a second or a third or a fourth in. <laughs> Now we get to watch you every day on Home and Family, a Hallmark Channel's Home and Family, and you have the most wonderful adoptable dogs that come on. Do you ever get tempted to bring one of them home? All the time. <laughs> All the time. I love them. It still surprises me, and I know how many great animals there are out there looking for homes, but we get everything that you would want. We get labs, pit bulls, uh, poodles, Maltese, purebreds, cockers, beautiful mixed breeds. I mean, you dream it, we've got it, or we can get it. And it just goes to show that no matter where you live and no matter what animal you want you can rescue one now it might take a little bit longer than walking into let's say a pet store or something and then there they are right there but it's such a worthwhile wait to find the right one for you and there are many days that I'm being you know the animals being taken back out of my arms and I'm like okay bye because I want to take them home but again I have to be responsible and not bring them all home that's so great 
Well, Larissa, you are the pet rescue goddess. Oh, thank, thank you. you for having us and introducing us to your little babies. Oh, it's so great. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back after these words. Hi, I'm Tina. This is Stuart. We're at AB Ranch in Santa Paula and you're watching Animal Zone. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Every morning you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance at finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them. And we're back here at Canine Solutions in San Inez, California with the owners. We got Eric, we got Justin, and we got a trainer named Adam who is from somewhere far away, I believe. Ireland. So. Ireland it is. And, uh, and Stitch, who is uh, someone you're working with, right? It is. Uh -huh. So you got Stitch, uh, what about, a, how long ago did you get him into uh, your... He's in his fourth week now of training. We had him for three and uh, Figured that, you know, he was doing well. We needed to extend it one more week to really make sure he had his training down. So before Stitch was a very aggressive, uh, active dog, and now he's Mr. Mellow, huh? Oh, yeah. What, what kind of things have you done to get him to uh, adapt to better behavior? Well, you know, it's more along the lines of his patience. You know, you really have to go at their pace because we don't want to stress it out, especially when you have an aggressive dog or a skittish dog, pushing them too hard in either direction, they're going to shut down or they're going to bite. Uh -huh. And both are counterproductive in training. So pretty much with Stitch, what we did is just took it at his pace, you know, introduced his commands, but we tried to do it in a fun way so that it was more along the lines of he was enjoying coming out every day. So when I bring him out every day for training, I think he's more excited than I am. <laughs> now I notice you have him on a prong collar. Yes, sir. Which we understand is a way to kind of communicate what's good and what's not so good, right? Yes, sir. Uh, can you get him to do something? Oh, yeah. Sitch, come on. Let's go. He's um, a slow mover. Yes. His hips are bothering him today. Yeah. How old is Stitch? About five. Uh-huh. So. And he's 100% pit bull, yes? Yes, sir. Uh, stitch, sit. Good down. sit. Good down. Look. Good boy. Ah. Now, I noticed when you had him look, you actually pointed to your eyes. And I've understood that sometimes dogs are threatened if they're stared down. Is there, is there like a, a, a limit of how long you look at a dog before you look away? As soon as he complies with the look, because you always want the dog focused on you. So is an idea not to wear sunglasses when you're <laughs> looking at a dog? Yeah, actually. Yeah. Now, I, I mean, I, I'm guilty of this. I talk to my dog in baby voice, baby talk, mm -hmm. because he's my baby. Sure. <laughs> but maybe that's not good, or is it OK? It's a little weird, but. <laughs> <laughs> may I, may I, uh, may I uh, pet your dog? Sure. Certainly. Hey, Stitch. hi. Stitch. Hey, Stitch. Hi, how are you? Do you smell Mikey? It's fantastic. Well, it's great to be with you and uh, great to be with Stitch. A stitch at K9 is a really fun time and uh, we appreciate you being on Animal Zone again. Thank you Our so pleasure. Much. Yeah, we'd love to be here. And Adam, thank you. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back after these words. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, 
If someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Care for Paws was started in 2009 with the goal to reduce pet overpopulation and keep animals out of shelters and also to ensure that pets can stay with their owners for life. We from the get-go established a free spay and neuter program that would help low-income pet owners fix their pets. So we provide shots, microchips, dewormer, flea treatment. We also have a veterinary intervention program. It's a way for us to help improve the quality of life for the animal as well for the owner. Because when an animal suffers in the family, so does the rest of the family. Imagine, if you will, a zone. A zone where animals can talk to humans. Submitted for your amazement, the pet psychic, as we enter the animal zone. We're with Laura Stinchfield, the pet psychic here on Animal Zone, and Wendy, and along with our baby Sprite, our little fur baby. And I gotta tell you one of the stories what happens when we shoot these shows. We go to animal shelters around the, the country, and we were at one in Los Angeles, the LA Kitten Rescue, and little Sprite there and his brother were just two of the most adorable little kittens. And the biggest problem you have when you do this show is you want to adopt them all. Well, I called Wendy and I said, I think we found a, a little friend for Electra and for all of us. And uh, Wendy said, well, let's, let's uh, find out about him. And she found out not only did, did, was Sprite there, but his brother Bu Buzz was there too. So she said, we can't separate them. We got to bring them both up. And uh, lo and behold, they became the, our latest family members. So Laura, with that said, maybe you can tap into Sprite and find out yeah. you know, what, maybe his early years. So, Sprite, <clears throat> do you remember anything about your life before you came here? Do you remember anything about that? Oh, you remember how the sun used to come through the window and how he would get warm through the window. Oh, so do you remember being outside at all? You remember sunlight? Because you were little, huh? You just remember the way it felt? Your mom was a good mom. So you remember that your mom used to carry you? Where did she carry you from? Do you remember? You were under a rock and she carried you to a bush. Oh, do you know? Was she outside? That know. sounds like he was outside. It does sound like they were outside. Yeah. It's a big litter too, I think. Yeah. He says, do you know what I love about this home? What? What is it that you love about this home? Oh, there's so much love at this home that you feel like a kitten even though you're growing up. You're still a kitten though, buddy. And they ask you if you wanna to play today? Oh, so Sprite says that the other thing that he loves about his home is that his people are always saying, like talking to him about his personality and like what kind of cat he is. And he said that helps him like grow into that. That's interesting. So like if you talk about him being confident, then it helps him grow into being more confident. He's very bold for, for a little guy. Oh. And, and it's amazing because he was a little tiny kitty. Yeah. And he was walking around and his tail st sticks straight up. Oh, and neat. It's like uh, he's like a little prince walking around. And uh, it's so great to see because he brings in that warm, happy personality yeah. wherever he goes. Well, maybe he's also rating that part of you guys, you know, like he's mirroring that. Now, he loves to sleep on Wendy's. Yeah. And I think you just heard him because he was just saying, I love to snuggle with my mom. I think you heard him. 
<laughs> I'm the other pet psychic. I, I think so. He really does, and, he, and it's so sweet. I, I watch them together, and it's like, uh, I don't know who's cuter, actually. Oh, <laughs> <I mean. laughs> that's so sweet. Uh, well, it's so great to hear all this from you and uh, to hear Sprite tell us what he thinks because it really drives home. I mean, it's all so accurate. It's amazing. You're, you're incredible, Laura, and I appreciate you coming in and sharing your insights. Sprite's us. incredible. Uh, well, that's great. Well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to have a lot more Animal Zone. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. My grandfather taught me about the beauty of the rugs. Each one tells a story. Story about the person who wove it, the person who bought it, the person who inherits it, the person who treasures it. It's amazing how simply looking at an object can bring you back to a different place and time or remind you of someone you love. At Santa Barbara Design Center, we want to help you find a rug that will travel through time with your family for generations to come. Visit us at 410 Oliver Street and find your treasure today. Water, the essence of life, flowing from Mother Earth, gathering essential minerals, trace elements and vitality as it journeys to the surface, collected fresh and pure from springs around the world, each one as unique as a fingerprint. The world's best bottled waters are waiting for you at bottledwaterweb.com. And welcome back to Animal Zone. Now joining us, we've got two very special guests and a third one, Tamiko and Christian Taft and their little friend, Alfie. Tell me about Alfie, who is the most stunning little Pomeranian. Yes, you are. So Alfie is a, uh, we believe, seven-year-old um, Pomeranian. He was a rescue uh, from the Santa Barbara shelter by way of Santa Maria, and we were fortunate to have been given the phone call that a rescue Pomeranian uh, in Santa Barbara County had been found and we had recently lost our little puppy Eddie and so we were just really excited to meet this new fluffy thing. When you had lost your other dog, I mean there's a period of grieving, it's hard to think about getting another dog and you told me you, you really weren't ready for another dog at the time. But that's, things changed. That's true. That's true. Emotionally, you know, when you lose a pet, there's a, you know, grief is grief. And it's important that you, you let that grief period um, come forth, all the emotions of losing an animal. And it was Tamiko uh, who said, you know, maybe it's time to <laughs> look. And then we, I saw Alfie, a picture of Alfie. And literally, I came home that night and he was in the living room barking at me. <laughs> and it was something special. Welcome home dad, yeah, right? Welcome home dad, exactly. Now Alfie is not like every other kind of dog. The, Alfie actually has an injury, which you would never tell by sitting here, but tell us about that. So from what we, we gathered from the, from the vets, um, Alfie had sustained an injury um, with his family back in Santa Maria and was not taken to a vet to get uh, proper care. And as it turned out, Alfie had a broken leg. And what we were told, uh, was that his leg uh, was broken for about three years, mm -hmm. which was an inoperable uh, surgical procedure. Um, and so the doctors made the decision to amputate his uh, front left leg fully. And that's how we, <laughs> you know, we got him sans leg. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it makes him super special. And, and believe me, you can't see right this second, but he yeah, is cold enough he's super mobile. He runs like the wind. Uh, he loves to play. He's a, f a fantastic yeah, little, little... Yeah, he gets around great. You guys are like double Animal Zone heroes because you've adopted an animal, an older animal, and an injured older animal. That's pretty incredible. Well, the nice thing, too, about an older animal, he came to us perfectly trained. I mean, he's such a good dog. He loves kids. He doesn't beg for food. He barely barks. Like, we didn't have to do anything, so we got really lucky. Now you were saying that, that when people think about adopting a dog, it's, there's a lot that goes with adopting an animal, and a dog especially. Some of the things that you have to go through before you make that commitment, what are, what are those? Right, I mean, it's, it's definitely a commitment. It's not something to take lightly. You're taking an animal's future into your home, into your hands, and you want to make sure, number one, safety first. Is your, is your home a safe place for this animal uh, to, to make itself comfortable? 
Um, you want to make sure that you have a, a good, stable kind of living environment. Obviously, you're going to be incurring expenses, um, possibly medical expenses. You've got to buy toys and food and make sure all of those things are in place, not unlike a, a child. And then the responsibility is equal. Um, one of the great things, too, is you also want to have people in your life that are also very dog friendly or pet friendly, um, which we have. We're very fortunate to have people that want to take care of Alfie that allows us to, if we'd like to travel, we know that there's someone that love is going to give Alfie that care that we would exactly like they would. Wow. So you have house. what, family or friends? Or friends of? here in town. Wow, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Because that, that takes a big burden off if you can depend upon someone uh, to help out. It's like having a kid. Yeah, where you absolutely. Can leave someone no, it'd be like having, uh, you know, leaving your child with a babysitter. And I'm not equating right. a children to a dog, but in our case, this is our little fur baby. Uh -huh. So we want him taken care of right. as such. Uh -huh. you know? And we're a little bit obsessive about it. Too, <laughs> so. I mean, it, it, it's just great to see that you guys have done so well. And, and it was the Santa Barbara Humane Society, right? Where, the, where ultimately you, you found Alfie yeah. through. Yeah. And was the adoption process smooth and mm -hmm. did it go easily? Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, they, they seem to really care about the animals that they put Absolutely. out for adoption. So yeah. they, I'm sure you went through a lot of qualifying as well. And that's a good thing. Yeah, oh, for sure. Know? To make sure they get a good home. Now, are you thinking about adding any more animals to your uh, group? Oh, gosh, we'd love to. Not at the moment, but we'll see, yeah. hopefully. Maybe a small cat or something. <laughs> <laughs> we know a few. We know a few. <laughs> well, you guys are great to be doing this. And you said that some of the folks that uh, help you with uh, Alfie are well. They happen to be right here in studio. Yes. Yeah. You want to introduce us to? As a matter of fact, today we have Lex and Lulu Burns. They are Alfie's bestest best friends. And help take and care of him when we go out of when town. We go out of town. Hi guys. Uh, oh, so <laughs> great. Alfie looks like he's pretty comfortable with you too. Oh yeah. Isn't that great? And they have another little one at home, Lulu. Or Lulu and Lex have a little um, Pomeranian called Lily. Oh. Uh, Alfie's little buddy. Alfie's little buddy. And, and uh, so Pomeranians are friendly with other Pomeranians, huh? Oh, yes. yes. They get on well. Yes. Well, that's great. Because then it's all one big happy family. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> and Alfie runs and plays and acts mm -hmm. just like a, a four legged dog, right? Mm -hmm. Easy. You, play, you throw ball for him or anything like that? Um, well, He's not really like a fetcher. <laughs> He's not a fetcher, huh? Okay. <laughs> but he likes to play. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he sure is cute. And you guys are cute to be looking after him. He's very lucky to have such a nice uh, family. Well, thank you guys all for all lucky. being here and uh, appreciate you giving us these insights. Thanks for having and, us. Uh, yes. Congratulations Absolutely. on being true uh, Animal Zone heroes and oh. adopting this wonderful dog. Of course. Thank uh, you. Thank right. you for having us. We'll be right back after these words. Sometimes scary things happen, like fires and floods, and suddenly a family has lost everything. That's why the Unity Shop has a disaster assistance program. We help families with immediate needs like food, clothing, and household items, and we continue to help them long term until they're back on their feet and in their homes. But it takes a whole community to make this possible. Please, donate today so we can help everyone who needs us. Find out how you can help at unityshop.org. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. The Santa Barbara Humane Society offers low-cost spay and neuter and vaccinations to cats and dogs in our community. And Dr. Sisk is our veterinarian who performs those surgeries and helps with the vaccinations. Also, please have a relationship with your local veterinarian in case of an emergency. Visit sbhumanesociety.org and remember... At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Weren't there some amazing animals and guests? You know, you who adopt animals from shelters, you are the true heroes. If you want to see more about Animal Zone and other things, check out our website, animalzone.org. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Never was a friend so true. Never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine. For all time, so glad you're my best friend. Through thick and thin, we'll see things through. Canine of mine, so true. And I find.
find you or did you find me? Either way, it's still serendipity. When I saw you, it was plain to see. You weren't just another lassie wanna be, oh, canine of mine. Friend for all time. I'm so glad you're my best friend.